Peggy 16. Hi, my name is Mark Norris, senior producer for Guerrilla Games on Horizon Zero Dawn. And here we are, finally with Paris Games Week. We premiered Horizon Zero Dawn at E3, and at that time we only showed the behind closed doors to a number of the media members, but we've never shown it publicly. And finally, we are going to do that here today. One thing that you should know almost immediately is, yes, you can explore everything that you can see here, but we're on a quest. Now we've hidden that quest UI and that quest interface, but one of those two tribes that you saw previously in the trailer, one of them has given you a quest, and it's a quest of critical importance. And that quest is to get a very specific resource. It's a resource from the canisters that you can find on the back of this herd that we call the grazers. Now, why do you need this resource? Why does this tribe need it? What is happening in this world? Those are still things that we're gonna keep a mystery, but you will desperately need to retrieve this because it's a critical part of what's happening. As you're looking at this screen, for the very first time, you're gonna notice some of our UI or our HUD elements. Now, the art on this isn't exactly final, but you can start to see how the game is really starting to creep into what we're doing. You can see in the top middle part of the screen, that there is a compass. Now we've hidden our quest markers and our quest objectives, and we'll talk about a quest here in just a moment, but you can see a compass certainly denotes an open world style of adventure. In the upper right hand corner of the screen, what you can see is the very beginning of a level and an experience bar. So you can start to see the RPG elements start to seep in. In the lower left hand corner of the screen, you can actually see our health bar. It's unusual, it's painted like an arrow. Some of the tribal influences are certainly coming into the UI and HUD, and even though the art's not final, you can expect that those tribal influences will stay. You've seen a number of locales inside of the trailer for Horizon Zero Dawn. You've seen some desert, you've seen some snow, and of course you see here the forest. And currently Aloy is crouched in what we call some stealth grass or some tall grass. Stealth plays an incredibly important part of Horizon Zero Dawn. In fact, you can see the UI element for this right underneath the compass is a little circle. That is in fact a stealth indicator. And so Aloy will need to wait for the right moment in order to introduce that stealth attack. Sorry, little one. So we mentioned that there are a couple of RPG elements, right? One of those things that you just saw, especially if you've got the keen eyes or if we zoom in on it, is the number 825 that just popped up. So that number 825 is incredibly important. Why? Because it denotes that there are, in fact, RPG elements hiding behind the hood. That is a damage value. We call that floating combat text, and you can see that number pop up. But now we've actually also gotten into the loot menu. Now we've described previously how important the machine parts are to the world of Horizon Zero Dawn, but here we're showing you some of those parts. In fact, that flame coil that you can see on screen is one of the elements that's required to build explosive arrows. Now, machine parts are incredibly important. The economy, the entirety of the world of Horizon Zero Dawn is built around these machine parts. So here you can see Aloy picking up what is essentially a couple of health plants. Now those will fill up your health if you get low. Uh, but the important thing here is actually what they represent. You will want to explore every nook and cranny of this open world. The ancient city, the tops of mountains, rivers and valleys, all kinds of settlements, because you never know what you'll find. Guerrilla's DNA is strong in Horizon Zero Dawn. We've talked about this game being an action RPG, but Guerrilla Games, Guerrilla Games is really known for its action. What Aloy is going to do here, she's going to use what we call the explosive tripwire. And that is really used as a trap. It can be used as a defensive countermeasure, but it's mostly used as a preventative measure. She knows, because she spent so much time with these machines, that these grazers are incredibly skittish, that they will run off at the first sight of her or the first sight of noise. And she knows that if she's gonna complete this quest, she's gotta get those canisters. So for her, the best way to make sure this happens is to set these explosive trip wires down and try to find a way to force the grazers into the traps. So that's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna set down a couple of these traps and we're gonna try and create a distraction. The machines in Horizon Zero Dawn do have herd-like activities. And here we have a species defending itself, these grazers allowing a couple of them to stick around to fight Aloy.
This is the Mighty Thunderjaw. One thing that you will immediately notice is the size differential between Aloy and the Thunderjaw. The Thunderjaw is 24 meters long and it's 10 meters wide. It has 93 destructible armor plates, each with its own health value, and it has 271 animations and 67 VFX. It has 12 attacks, it's 550,000 polygons. And so what we're taking a look at here is actually some of the strategic and tactical elements of a fight that Aloy will want to think about when she gets engaged with the Thunderjaw. So we're gonna take a look right here at the fact that there is actually some weak points on the Thunderjaw. As you're taking a look at the leg here, that orange muscle that you can kind of see underneath there, uh, uh, that is also a weak point. If you're able to hit that, you're able to do four times the amount of damage that you would ordinarily do. Now the question is, how would you actually take off that armor plate? Now we give you a couple of options there, but the best option is to use the machine itself. So we're taking a look at the disc launcher right now and you saw earlier in the E3 trailer that you can shoot off the machine. Uh, you can shoot off the disc launcher, but you didn't know why we did it. The reason why we did it is because it takes a lot of arrows to knock off a Thunderjaw's armor plate. But if you can knock off its disc launcher, you can pick the disc launcher up and use its own weapons against it. And that's one of the best ways to take down the Thunderjaw. <laughs> Fighting the Thunderjaw is an awe-inspiring experience. We talked previously about the fact that it has 12 attacks. A number of those attacks that you're seeing now you hadn't seen before. It's not that it has a tail swipe and a foot stomp and a little bit of a disc launcher attack. Shooting off those disc launchers is incredibly important for a second tactical reason. It has a 360 degree absolute assault with that disc launcher that makes it incredibly difficult for you to get anywhere close to it. So you're gonna to wanna to take off those disc launchers. But if you are, you'll notice now it still has a rail gun and a mouth laser. So this thing's serious, even though it's previously damaged, it still has a huge amount of attacks. So what Aloy is gonna try and do here is try to find a way to tie the machine down so that she gets a brief window to figure out her next move. So that was the playthrough of the behind closed door session of Horizon Zero Dawn. We cannot wait to show you more. We're gonna show you something brand new and something huge next year. Thank you. For the players.